curtains go where the fires are high and the candles glow. Take me down to that magical place where the dancing and swaying at a feverish pace. Take me away on a mystical ride, moving through the layer to the other side. Fill me up with spirit songs of power and love's alive. Take me down where the pagans go where the fires are high and the candles glow. Take me down to that magical place where they're dancing and swaying at a feverish pace. Take me away on a mystical ride, moving through the veil to the other side. Fill me up with the spirit songs of power and love's alive. Take me down through the seven gates where I'll cast my being to the hands of fate. Take me down to the dragon's lair where myth and legend ride the air. Let me rise on the messenger's wings. Let me see what the future brings. Fill me up with the spirit songs of power and love's alive. Take me down with the pagans. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Keepers of the Flame. I am Reverend Alicia Lyon Fulberth, and with me today is my dear friend, 
the first priestess of the Georgian tradition of the traditional line and an elder in several other traditions. And welcome. Well, thank you, Alicia. It's lovely to be here with you. Good. I'm glad. I'm really honored that you were able to uh, do this little mini interview for me while we were up here in Connecticut. So I do appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Now, you had mentioned the traditional line. Could you just tell me briefly about the the difference between the g different Georgian lines? Yes, I can. Um, after Patterson uh, died, uh, there were a lot of schisms, and people began to do things the way they wanted to do them and changing, like, the laws and different things like that. And as the senior-most priestess, I felt that we should keep the actual tradition alive. Mm -hmm. So people under me and under... Uh, the Florida line and the Elven line up in Canada are keeping that traditional line alive, using the tradition as the tradition, whereas we use exactly what Patterson gave us, mm -hmm. and we do not delete or remove anything. We may add things um, to the end of that or our own rituals and such. There were two other that I felt were two distinct other lines, and there was one that was sort of eclectic, um, sort of like the magpie thing, you know, grab a little bit from here, a little bit from there, and throw it in the mix, and okay, fine. A lot of people do that. And then there was the one that was uh, doing same-sex initiations, and so we call them the Dianic line. Mm -hmm. uh, they may not happen to agree with me, uh, but I felt that this was the most politic way to deal with these schisms, was to say, okay, we're all Georgians. Mm -hmm. But like the Gardnerians, there's different lines. Um, they may not change a whole lot, but then again, they may. So they're still recognized as a Gardnerian. Um, but the traditional line does the traditional initiation. We follow the Sabbath cycle. We have mm -hmm. various things that must be done a certain way, or it isn't the traditional line. Right. And so that's where we're at with that. Like I said, they may not agree with me, but still, you know, I didn't say you're not Georgians. So I think woohoo for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And tell me a little bit about how you got started in the craft. I was always pretty fascinated with my dreams and the strange occurrences in my life. Uh, I saw dead people everywhere mm -hmm. so to speak and so I always was a little bit odd for my family but it wasn't until I got quite a bit older I was actually taking a class in college and there was a McCall's magazine that had tarot cards and black cats and crystal balls and it was a Halloween issue and I was like wow I gotta I gotta learn about this stuff I gotta learn about this stuff and I couldn't find anything you're looking at 19 Oh, 67, 68, there wasn't a lot out there um, to find. And I kept on digging. And one, one time I was dating a DJ from one of the radio stations in Bakersfield, and he was talking about a witch he, had, he knew. And I'm like, <laughs> witch? Where, which witch? Where? Where is this witch? And they go, oh, no, 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 no. You know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, come on, tell me about him. And then he, as they say, moved on up the dial. And so I wasn't seeing him anymore and didn't know how to get a hold of him. Started calling up all the DJs I could find to ask them if they knew about this witch. So one of them did, and he goes, oh, yeah, but you don't really want to do that, do you? And I'm like, well, yeah, I do. I, I got to find out about this. This is crazy. Um, just a year prior, I had found at a friend's house a Coronet magazine. Mm -hmm. And in it was an interview with Sybil Leake, Ray and Rosie Buckland, and Louise Humner, And they all gave spells. Well, I didn't know what a Tonka bean was or where to find one, so I didn't do Sybil's. But I did Louise Hubner's little red candle spell for Love Magic, mm -hmm. and I did Ray and Rosie's uh, spell for the Money Magic, which worked amazingly well, and I still remember the way it goes. <laughs> when the gray owlet has three times hooed, when the grinning cat has three times mewed, mm -hmm. when the toad has croaked three times in the wood, at the red of the moon, this money is good. 
I remember that's my first spell <laughs> and I remember wow. it and it worked because within a week's time I got a check for $26 from Ma Bell. The telephone company doesn't ever pay you anything <laughs> no. and $26 in 1971 not. is quite a lot of money for a young lady. Yes it is. You know yes, so that was fun and so I just had to find this which I just had to find this which uh, my traditional upbringing and stuff was not fulfilling me. I needed something. I am a very spiritual person, and I needed something. And I was, this is what felt like I needed to go for. And so I kept pressing on until finally somebody told me where this person worked. And I called up his workplace and said, Hi, my name is, and I'm looking for, I want to talk to the witch. <laughs> <laughs> and he had a very deep voice. He did radio, um, Pat Patterson, and um, had a very deep voice. And he's like, what do you want? <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, I want to know what it's like to be a witch. I want to be a witch. <laughs> and he's like, well, uh, uh, okay. And then he gave me a time and, a, and an address. And we went, my friend um, Tanith and I went over there. Her name is Tanith now. We went over there together, and we're going up the up the sidewalk, and she's saying, "But but what if he's a, a an ex murderer?" And I said, "Well, don't don't worry about it." I said, "You distract yeah. him, and I'll knock him out." <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, "Yeah, make me bait. Why don't you?" <laughs> yeah. So you know, and we got in there, and here's this beautiful round colonial maple, mm -hmm. um coffee table and it's got this spell laid out on it with all these green candles and there's a knife with sigils written on it and all this stuff and I I hadn't read but like one book which was I believe the diary of a witch by Sybil mm -hmm. which doesn't tell you about all those symbols and whatnot and I look at that and I said you were calling us with that weren't you and he goes well not you specifically but the right people to work the craft with Mm -hmm. And I said, we can't touch that, can we? And he goes, no, you may not touch my knife. <laughs> that's my athame, and you may not touch it. So that's how we started. And uh, he and I and Tanith formed the first coven. We actually started it and decided it in mm -hmm. 71. So when you see those trucks going by that say Z71, remember me. <laughs> I'm going to have one of those trucks so I can go Z71, my private joke. But that's pretty much how I got started, yeah. Okay. And when did you begin to learn about other witches and traditions? It wasn't too long after that because part of what Pat did was subscribe to Eye of Horus, uh, Kitty Lessing's Black Light, mm -hmm. um, The Green Egg, and all of these. And so we'd read, we'd read these and that was part of our coven meeting. We, we would read letters from, you know, Harold Moss of, of the Church of Eternal Source and, mm -hmm. um, you know, the Green Egg people and Lady Gwen, who was very big in my life. Uh, she was uh, like a spiritual mother for me. She's the, the, uh, the head of the NECTW at the time. And uh, so we would read those. And then that gave me contacts to other people. And then it wasn't too long after we were doing this, I believe in 75, March of 75, I went up to represent the Georgian covens at Gwydion Penderwin's house for the convening of COG. That's when we were going to decide if we actually wanted to do this sort of thing. And it was pretty amazing meeting. And yes, we did. And then we returned and went to Coed and Breath um, the summer, sol summer solstice of 75 mm -hmm. when we signed the charter. And, yep, I signed that charter. Yes, I did. Wow. And so pretty amazing. And COG's, COG's a long way down the road now and still going. Mm -hmm. It's still functioning. Um, I also was part of the COG situation in Seattle for several years, which was the only chapter that actually did open open public rituals. The others are more like for information and stuff, but we did open public rituals and that was pretty amazing. We had a lot of great, good rituals come out of that. And who were some of your early influences? Oh my heavens. Um, 
Well, of course, like I said, other than Pat, who was my first teacher and always remains in high respect Mm -hmm. for that, Lady Gwen, Leo Martello, Ed Businski, um, Ed Fitch, of course, um, Martha and Fred Adler, uh, Bonnie Sherlock. Some of these people you won't even know now because they were quite older at the time and they died. Uh, Gwydion Penderwin and Allison Harlow. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh, who else? Um, well, right at the... Oh, Joe Wilson, of course, you know, of 1734. And these were not just influences. They were friends. Yes. They were people that I enjoyed their company and their favor and I am forever blessed to have known these people kind of like I kind of feel about you that I well, thank you. you're you're one of the people that I feel forever blessed by and you're also too the very uh first introduction to craft that I ever witnessed although I was very Christian at the time I was very oh, confused the goddess wanted you. um yeah uh, I still remember the original tarot reading that we did, and the High Priestess card came up, and you told me that I yes. I had a serious priestess business in the future. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. And you have for fulfilled that very well. I'm very proud to know you. Um, what would you like to tell the, the upcoming generation? What do you think they need to know? Oh, my goodness. We don't have enough years. <laughs> uh <laughs> well, uh, reading a book isn't going to do it. If you look at the charge of the goddess, it's not found in the pages of the book. It's inside you, for one thing. Uh, it doesn't matter how much occult jewelry you put on, how many books you own, how many paintings, statues, or altar accoutrements you have. If it's not in here, you don't have it. And knowledge is not wisdom. Knowledge is just knowing things, just learning things. You have to have experience with the knowledge to make it wisdom. Mm -hmm. And my people don't get to call themselves an elder until they've been around for about eight years. And then they can call themselves a baby elder. Because I had people calling me an elder when I was maybe three years into the craft, and I'm, I'm like, oh, I don't feel like an elder. <laughs> I didn't know diddly from the beginning, and mm-hmm. I know very little more now. Right. Why are you calling me an elder? You know, and everybody thinks just because the minute they get a, a third degree, they're an elder. It's like, oh, got news for you. Wait till you go through about five years of running a coven, and with all the fun that comes with, and you get my drift fun, <laughs> mixed blessing, then you might want to call yourself an elder after that. But that's, yeah. Don't think you know it all because you can read a few books. Because you're going to, oh, the God and Goddess will let you know. Yeah. They, they will definitely let you know. And the gods are real. You people need to know they're real. They are not some m- mind construct or some so-called archetype. These are real forces, so you better be very careful who you're calling up in your circle. Mm -hmm. You better be very careful, and you better know exactly what they're about, what they like, what they don't like, and how to talk to them and how to respect them, because Pan is panic. (laughs) He's pandemonium, okay? He can cut loose on you. Heckety is not some cool gothic like oh yeah like let's have this black robe like thing you know and let's oh let's call up hackety oh it's so cool oh yeah let her get a hold of you if you've done wrong she'll get a hold of you and you will be shaken like a rat in a terrier's mouth (laughs) i have seen this happen to people and they because they basically made fun of her oh Mm -hmm. she's nothing you know oh yes she is and she has centuries of worshipers putting their power into her and her their belief into her. And this is how we do it, is we keep them alive, that they keep us spiritually alive. We feed into them, and they feed back to us. It's very, very ecological in a spiritual mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. That's There's about two million more things I could tell you, but those are the most important things, I think. Oh, okay. Don't think you're the high priestess just because you read a book. 
<laughs> it doesn't work that way. Okay. Yeah, I thought I might um, mention this. Um, Zanoni is uh, in Keepers of the Flame by um, Morgana Davies and Radio Lynch. And, you know, it was uh, kind of interesting when I first recontacted you. You know, I was uh, learning Reiki from Morgana. And, mm -hmm. you know, you, you told me that you were in the book, and I didn't even realize that you were in the book. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know if you and I have to give yeah. thanks to uh, one of my students. He hasn't yet taken initiation from me, right. but a Raven Digitalis. Mm -hmm. He always mentions me in his books, and awesome. we're good friends. We're very good friends, and um, I'm very proud to, to know him as well. And what are some, some of your uh, projects that you're working on right now? Oh, dear me. I'm still working on the traditional Georgian Elder Handbook. Um, between various moves and job changes, breaking down computers and whatever. It's not quite finished, but we're really close. And I'm actually hoping to put that together on Lulu for my my traditional line elders, the Georgian elders that are mm -hmm. traditional, and and get that actually in a book for them. So it's a real book book and not just a CD or something, you know. And that, and I'm working also on a novel called House of Cards. It's a one woman's journey through the entire tarot. And it's, wow, am I learning some things about the tarot. I have never would have thought to read that card that way. But they just, these things become such a powerful force in your life that, that uh, they write themselves. The characters invent themselves. It's amazing. It's just amazing. Uh, I am also teaching a rune study group, mm -hmm. and um, I got my start with Diana Paxson. Yay, Diana. And uh, she taught me how to do sage setting, and then from there I went on into rune study, and now I'm teaching these things, and it's, it's a joy. It's a joy to see the light dawn in their eyes. And have them go and have them chanting Fehu, Fehu, Fehu. After a year of searching for a job, and then I get them chanting Fehu, 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 and they get a job. Awesome. So it's it's wonderful. You know, Fehu is the one that looks kind of like the little F thing. And, and it means portable wealth, mm -hmm. basically. So I'm going, you just keep that Fehu up. Keep going, Fehu, Fehu, Fehu. So now they're like, can we do Burkano? I got a sore toe. <laughs> can we do Can we do Thurisage? I need protection from this person at work. I'm like, yes, we can. And we'll do the bell chants, and we'll put the person in the center, and then we'll all hold hands, and we'll start at the base chakra and go, you know, Thurisage. And then up to the top chakra, Thurisage. And then come into the heart chakra, Thurisage. And they're like, <laughs> trembling, glowing, happy, and they walk out of there and they don't have a problem with that person anymore. It's very powerful stuff, those bell chants. Hmm. Very powerful stuff, indeed. Uh, I've got a lot of uh, French class to take. I've got art classes I'm doing, and I'm going to be volunteering at uh, Zoo Town Arts Council Center pretty mm -hmm. soon, and I'm having fun. I'm enjoying it. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for agreeing to do the interview with me. I know it was kind of a almost a last minute thing, Indeed. but you know, is there anything else that you'd like to say before uh, we finish? Yes. Look at that charge of the goddess, and it says, "Strive to keep to your highest ideals." And no matter what is going on around you in the world, you need to keep that core of your spirituality strong inside you. You may look beaten down, but inside you are glowing this bright light. You're a bright spirit. And the goddess loves you, every one of you. And the God is there to protect every one of you. Just because we go through crap doesn't mean that we aren't loved and that we aren't successful in reaching out and touching someone else.
It, it is important to remember that every one of us matters. We all matter. And just because someone isn't behaving nicely doesn't mean they're without worth. Mm -hmm. Um, That worth may not shine until the end of their life when they finally realize the error of their ways, um, or it may not catch up to them until another lifetime. Mm -hmm. But every single one of us is a drop in the ocean. We are all of worth, every single one of us. Okay. Well, thank you, honey. That was really wonderful. Thank you. And hopefully I'll get to do this again at some point. Indeed. We'll plan on it. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome, hon. Blessed be. Blessed be. My, my, we're passers by. It's gonna be okay for you Made up my mind to stay off the fence When I see what you got, I ain't got no defense for you You can't turn away from a knock at the door When no one answers you through Is that what you're going to do? You lose you I close my eyes but not to sleep, love I close my eyes to go in deeper than I've ever been before
Raising the Power Raising the power within ritual begins with the circle, as so many spiritual traditions around the world practice. The symbolism of the circle is universal, having no beginning nor end, and its members within the ritual circle become equals. In modern witchcraft, magic is created within the circle, just as historic witchcraft illustrations have depicted. This is a method that has not changed over time. Psychic energy is raised in unison by a group using intent of will by its practitioners for specific purposes. This is a deliberate act of magic, and a group mind is formed to direct the energy. You might think of magic as a form of prayer, which rather than passively asking for change, is actively created by engaging forces within the universe. We act as co-creators with the divine and with our reality, stepping between the worlds of the seen and unseen, a time outside of time. Many neo-pagan religions and practices outside of Wicca may use similar means in raising energy, and the methods used to achieve this vary even within Wiccan traditions as do their teachings. The Eightfold Path Gardner's Book of Shadows delineates eight methods of creating magic. The first path is meditation or concentration. This is mental imagery or visualization. Intention and concentration of intent. Affirming the knowledge that you can and will succeed, forming a clear picture in your mind for your requirements. The second path is trance, clairvoyance, projection of the astral. Rising up on the planes of using the many trans states better known as the altered states of consciousness, projection of the astral body. The third path is rites, chants, spells, runes, and charms. This is the magical link. The fourth path is intoxicants, wine and incense, whatever is used to release the spirit. The fifth path is dance, performing rites and kindred practices, such as raising the fiery cone of power. The sixth path is blood control, also known as the use of warwicking through cords and breath control. The seventh path is the scourge, the ancient rite of scourging to purify. The eighth path is the great right, the physical and spiritual union of the male and female to create life. Within the ritual circle, the cone of power is the chief method of raising energy in ritual magic, especially witchcraft. It is remembered in the witches and wizards hat of old folk stories, which you will notice is a circle at its base with a cone rising from it. Its origins, while obscure, have occurred throughout history, but it is very symbolic of the magic that which is still raised today. The cone of power is symbolic of the sun, eternity, and rebirth. Its very shape evokes the triangle, also associated with the pyramids and the sacred number three. Three is the number of the divine found in the goddess in her triple aspect and within ancient Celtic beliefs, which would later become the trinity of Christianity. The term cone of power refers to the idea that the raised energy forms a cone from the base of the circle. The ritual circle, once erected on the spiritual plane, acts as both a lens and a focus for creating a cone shape. The group may hold hands, sing, chant, dance, drum, or use other ritual methods to create the psychic energy needed, and that energy needs to be in alignment with its magical purpose. The cone of power may be seen spiritually and visualized as pulsating with a silvery blue light. The individuals that form the circle space and bottom of the cone direct the psychic energy to its apex, extending into the heavens. When this cone of energy has reached its maximum strength, it is released through its apex with all movement and chance stopped in unison by the priestess giving the command down. One of the traditional ways to raise a cone of power is with the chant, The Witch's Rune. It is a chant that is accompanied by a simple circle dance. The chant evokes the same forces as the circle itself, acting as an aid to raise the power. 
To give you some insight into how this works, the following example is a recording of the Witch's Rune on a BBC 1960s radio broadcast. Gerald Gardner, the father of modern Wicca, Patricia Crowther, and a number of his coven members are chanting in this appearance. Its words have been included, and the video of the dancers which follow were filmed by the modern Witch's Workshop of Australia. Dark sun night and shining moon, east and south and west and north, earth and jewel or witch's moon, there come I to call ye forth, earth and water, air and fire, bond and pentacle and soul, work ye all for my desire, half of ye and through my word, cold and sense of gold and night, power while the witch's way, wait and all ye unto light, come ye as the charm is made. Room and heaven, room and hell, all of hunger overnight. Bring your power and do a spell, work my will by magic light. By all the power of land and sea, by all the might of moon and sun, of idle will, the mother be, of idle play, the shower of the young. Thank <laughs> you. 
And this particular part is from Act 4. Scene 1. Three witches are gathered around a fire. Thrice the brinded cat hath mewed. Thrice and once the hatch big wine. Harvey cries, tis time, tis time. Ran about the cauldron gown. Take the poison then to throw. Skin of toad is spark of bow. Shackled down at Neagle's throat. Serpent tag and dancing dead. Effigy of beat and let double double trouble. Leave bubble in a witch's brew. Fillet of a fanny snipe. In the corner by the bar. Eye of mutton toe frog. Lizard leg and fairy wing round about the cold and sing Double, double, trouble, you bubble in a witch's brew Make the fire dance and burn For a will it will be done when the hurly burly's done Double, double, trouble, you bubble in a witch's grip Okay, now comes a curse, everybody. Sing along. This one's for Monsanto. Double, double, toil and trouble. Fire burning, cauldron bubble. Double, double, trouble here. Double, double, toil and trouble. Like a hell broth boil and bubble. Cauldron go, in the poison that was thrown. Skin of toad, a spark of bow. Shattered tag and eagles, the serpent tag and dancing dead. Effigy of bees and let double, double, trouble you bubble in a witch's brew. Fill it up with fairy snipe. In the cold and boil and boil. Like a mutant toad with frog. Full of fat and dumb and dumb. Lizard leg and fairy wing round about the cold and sing double. Trouble your bubble in a witch's group Good <laughs> man drag dog at night When the moon is full of bright Sing a few and twig a fur Make the fire dance and burn For our will it will be done when the hurly burly's done Double, double, trouble your bubble in a witch's group So this was the Saturday Pagan Night at Castlefust. We're gonna play this last piece for you now. We play it for you. We play it for her, Morrigan, Crone of War.
Here we go all together. Over hills and over meadows, see the crow fly in a shadow. Over woods and over mountains, searching for a war. The winds embrace each strife and battle, where swords they clash and chariots rattle. Seeking out the one whose time has come to take the blame. Mark an ancient crone of war, I see your face, I'll cry no more. Mark an ancient crone of war, come lift me on your wings. Mark an ancient crone of war, I hear your voice, I'll breathe no more. Mark an ancient crone of war, come set my spirit free. of the Flame is produced by the Pantheon Temple. If you have enjoyed this show, please consider donating to the Pantheon Temple. We are a 501c3 nonprofit temple and the first Wiccan and Pagan temple in the state of Connecticut. It is our dream to someday have land in a building. Please help us achieve this goal. And for more information about us and our events, please go to our website at www.pantheontemple.org. You can also write us at Pantheon Temple at AOL.com or Pantheon Temple POB 111, Derby, Connecticut 06418. And please visit Keepers of the Flame 
at our new website at www.keepersoftheflametv.com. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Fill me up with spirit songs of power and love's alive. 